Hello, I'm Maria, the founder of Four Season Foraging, a Minneapolis-based business that teaches you to safely and sustainably identify and harvest wild edible plants. And today I'm here to talk about this plant, white cedar. Um, but before I get into it, just a quick reminder that if you like my video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. All right, so today we're talking about white cedar. It's also known as arborvitae. Um, the Latin name is Thuya occidentalis. And it's a native tree. It's pretty commonly found planted in parks and yards and other landscapes um, because it's pretty. And uh, otherwise, if you find it in the wild, it's growing in like lowland, like wet kind of swampy areas. And at least most commonly, that's where you'll find it. And uh, to identify it, first look at kind of the general form of it. So this tree is really small. It's a young tree. Um, you can see it's just a little bit taller than me. They'll get, you know, twice as big, maybe three times as big, depending on the growing conditions. But the shape will kind of always be similar where it's this like conical pyramidal kind of shape. Um, and you can tell it's like rounded and kind of fluffy around the edges as well. So that's a way you can kind of see it from a distance once you get closer and take a look at the needles or leaves. Um, you'll see that they're scale-like and that they grow in these flat sprays. So when I say flat, what I mean is like if I lay it on my hand, it's really easy to lay it flat. Uh, you can imagine even just like squishing it between two panes of glass and just how easily it would lay flat. Um, so in comparison to other plants, like for example, red cedar, which looks kind of similar, but it has more of a bushy appearance. Um, and then you can't see the bark on this so well because it's such a young tree, but the bark is like brownish, reddish, and has horizontal flakes, long horizontal striations with flakes. Um, and then I'll show a close up of the, well, I'll show a close up of the leaves as well, but the cones too. The cones are really tiny. Um, they're about a quarter inch long. I don't even know. Probably can't even see them from that distance because they're so small, but there's some, there's some little cones on there. So, uh, yeah, that's the basics of white cedar identification. Okay, so here's a close-up of the needles. So when I say they're growing in this flat spray, what I mean is, if you imagine like putting this between two panes of glass, it would go in between those panes of glass very easily. They're just very flat needles. Um, unlike something like red cedar, which is more bushy, these just grow in these flat sprays doesn't hurt at all to touch it. There's no pokey quality to it. Um, another thing about white cedar is the smell is really distinctive. So if you take it and don't need a lot for this, just crush up a tiny bit and smell it, that aroma is really powerful. Um, and quite a lot of evergreens have that really bright scent that this does, but with time you'll be able to identify it by the scent alone so it's great it's very uplifting i love it okay so i'm standing next to an eastern red cedar tree um its latin name is juniperus virginiana so even though it's called a cedar it's technically not a cedar um it's a juniper so it looks very similar to cedar in a way, <laughs> which is why it's called that. But if you look closer, you can tell the difference. Um, so from a distance, the shape looks pretty similar. Like this tree is pretty big. Obviously, I can't get the whole thing in the camera, so it's hard to see this shape, but it kind of has the conical like pyramidal shape that white cedar does. Um, red cedar tends to be a bit more spiky or like sharp angled. Um, but it can be a little hard to tell from a distance. This is the tree that you're most likely to confuse with white cedar, but if you take a close look, you can definitely tell the difference. Um, they do have similar like scale-like leaves, but remember how I was saying with 
white cedar that you can they grow very flat you can just imagine them like laying flat on a pane of glass or squishing them between two planes of glass so these are more bushy as you can probably tell um, and they also have blueberries they're technically modified cones but they look like little blueberries that grow on them um, and you won't necessarily find berries on every tree just because you know the birds eat them and they fall off and whatever but if you see the blueberries on there it's a definite sign that it's a red cedar or a juniper okay so i just wanted to make sure that the difference between white cedar and red cedar is really apparent um, since that's the tree that you're most likely to confuse it with so here i have a twig of red cedar that i found on the ground so you can see it's a little dried up but that's okay it'll still illustrate my point so uh remember how i keep saying that white cedar grows in these flat sprays so if you look at the white cedar leaves here you can just like lay it flat in my hand let me take this one see how flat that is like i can easily just like squish it between my two hands or if you imagine like two panes of glass it'll just squish between there really easily so if you take red cedar you can see how bushy this is in comparison like it doesn't lay flat in my hand if i try to squish it you can see how much volume there is there that i have to compress red cedar is the bushy one white cedar the flat sprays um, and then the other difference is with the cones so here are the cones of white cedar they're just these little tiny guys oops well this one's open uh they're these little tiny guys they're about a quarter of an inch long there it goes they're just really small and when they open up they almost look flower like and then here's this red cedar twig that was on the ground you can see the needles are all old and dry but the berries are still on there they're kind of a dusty blue color so if you compare these berries with these cones again the dis difference is apparent this one is red cedar this one is white cedar okay so what does one do with white cedar well uh, you can probably guess that you don't want to just eat the leaves um, because they have this waxy coating and they're just not very pleasant to eat on their own so uh, what people usually do what i usually do is make a tea out of it um, you could do another infusion like a tincture which is basically steeping it in alcohol for six to eight weeks um, or infusing it into maple syrup or simple syrup or honey or something like that but um, tea is what i usually see and it's what i do most often so to make a tea with this you harvest the leaves and you coarsely chop them and you only need about a tablespoon of chopped leaves per cup of water so you don't need a lot um, if you're just doing it for the flavor that is if you're doing it medicinally you'll want more and i'll talk about that more a little later but just to get the flavor of the tea one tablespoon of chopped greens chopped leaves per cup of boiling water is fine so you take your tablespoon of greens and you put it into a pot with boiling water and you boil it about five minutes and then you strain it out and drink it it's that easy um, you can add sweetener if you like maple syrup is a really tasty sweetener with this uh, i like it both ways unsweetened or sweetened um, i think the flavor is actually pretty mild when you're following this recipe it's not something that tastes like too medicinal or overpowering it has a nice almost a citrusy flavor and kind of a like resinous like camphorous um when i say camphorous i mean uh kind of associated with that like vix vapor rub <laughs> feeling when you put it on your chest um so kind of that kind of smell and taste um which might not sound pleasant to you but i think it's good and actually in my classes about evergreens i've been kind of surprised to find that most people prefer it unsweetened so i encourage you to try it both ways if you're looking to take this plant 
medicinally, I would encourage a more concentrated dosage. So um, what I would do is a half cup of the chopped leaves in two cups of boiling water. So same thing, put it in a pot of boiling water. Um, also, it's best to use a non-reactive pot, something like stainless steel or glass if you have it, um, not like aluminum or Teflon or anything like that. Um, so you bring it to a boil, you want to simmer it about 20 minutes or until the liquid is reduced to two cups. So you want it to go from three cups to two cups. And then the standard dosage of that is one cup three times a day. So depending on what your needs are, what your body is like, what symptoms you're having, you might need more or less. Um, but that's kind of the general dosage. And that will taste very strong. <laughs> and you probably will want to sweeten it because uh, it, yeah, definitely tastes medicinal. So what is cedar used for medicinally? Well, most popularly, it's used to treat colds and coughs, fevers, sore throats, things like that. Um, you know, sicknesses you often get during the winter. The leaves contain vitamins A and C. So as you probably know, vitamin C is a good thing to take when you're sick or if you're, you feel like you're about to get sick. It's a great decongestant. Um, you know, it helps get mucus out of your lungs. Like I was saying earlier, it has kind of that camphorous feeling, that like Vicks Vapor Rub feeling. So you can imagine how something like that would help you expel mucus and phlegm from your lungs. Um, and yeah, I recommend drinking it hot. That will help bring down your fever. Um, personally, <laughs> I'm a big proponent of like sweating it out. Um, that's kind of an old school thing that I grew up with from my like German grandma. You know, whenever me or my sister were sick, we'd get all bundled up in blankets and then give us copious amounts of hot tea and we would just be pouring sweat. And it was pretty terrible, but you know, then like the next day when you woke up, you'd feel so much better. <laughs> so um, that's my method. It's maybe a bit like masochistic. I don't know, but not saying you necessarily have to put yourself through it to that extent. Um, <laughs> but that's what I do a lot of time when I'm sick. So uh, anyway, white cedar will definitely help you in those situations. And um yeah, try it out. Some things to take note of before you do try it, though, is that uh, white cedar is considered an amenagogue, which basically means it can cause abortions um, or miscarriages. So if you're pregnant, you might want to avoid it. It's like it's a thing where if you're taking it in low amounts and you're pregnant, the chances of complications are low. Um, but if you are sick and you're trying to take it medicinally and drinking a ton of it, you might not want to pursue that course of action if you are pregnant. Um, especially if you've had a risk of miscarriage. So another thing to be aware of is that it contains a compound called thuyone. So Thuyone has gotten a lot of bad rap over the years. Um, it's found in a lot of herbs. It's found in wormwood, sage, oregano, um, other common kitchen herbs. And basically it got a bad reputation because wormwood was a primary ingredient in absinthe, which is a very high alcohol liquor that for a while was popular um, in the 1800s and there is a backlash against it and without going too much into that basically Thuyon was labeled like a psychoactive and it'll make you go crazy and you'll hallucinate and none of that is true <laughs> um, so chances are if you take a single chemical out of a plant and you isolate it and you concentrate it and you you know force feed it to rats or whatever like bad things are gonna happen um, but Based on my research, you would have to drink like obscene amounts of cedar tea to actually get a negative negative effect from thuyone. Um, I mean, if it's something that concerns you, you could talk to your doctor about it. Definitely don't want anyone out there getting sick. But 
in my experience and based on my research, it's something that's been over vilified and kind of overhyped as a negative thing. Um, and you never hear people talking about like, oh, don't eat sage because it has thuyone, right? So kind of, I kind of feel like wild plants get more of a bad reputation when it comes to stuff like that. Um, but anyways, I'll get off my soapbox, <laughs> my soapbox about that. Um, and just let you know that thuyon is a controversial thing and it's up to you to decide whether you want to consume it or not. So I just wanted to point out that as far as medicinal qualities go um, and the thuyon content, it's very hard to consume a harmful amount of thuyon just by drinking cedar tea. Um, people often mention cedar oil having a very high thuyone content, and that's true, but you should never take any essential oils internally. Um, essential oils are meant for external applications, like putting it in a salve or mixing it with a carrier oil, like um, almond oil or olive oil or something like that, and applying it to your skin. It's not even recommended that you put it on your skin directly, like you're supposed to dilute it before doing that. So. Um, yeah, essential oils are highly, highly concentrated and should never be taken internally. It's very dangerous. So um, not just for cedar, but for other plants as well. All right. Thank you for joining me in this video about white cedar. I hope that you found it informative. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. It's a great way to support my site for free. Um, if you are interested in contributing financial donations, uh, you can do so over on Patreon and they start at only a dollar a month and I'd really appreciate it. So again, uh, thank you and go explore white cedar for yourself. Have a good one.